Hey there, my friends, what is up? Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So I wanna take you to what I think honestly is the coolest of all of the Psalms. And, and again, it's, it, it's cool for a kind of unique nature because it is not only, I think the coolest one, I think it is the, I know it's the longest Psalm uh, and I think it's the longest chapter in all scripture. It is Psalm 119. There are 176 six verses. I don't think it's touched by any others. Doctrine and Covenants, I think, has got one with 145 verses, but other than that, that's about as close as you get. So Psalm 119 is extremely unique. As you look at it, you see these Hebrew letters in here. Now, there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and they are all consonants. I think there's a few of them that can be used as vowels, kind of like the way we use in the, in the English language, the way we use the letter Y. You know, it's kind of interchangeable. So there's a few that are like that, but they're consonants. So there's 22 of them. Now this chapter, like I said, has got 176 verses. Each letter of the Hebrew alphabet is represented here by eight verses. So as you kind of scroll through here, you see them in verses of eight. And it is very acrostic in nature. Now when I say acrostic, you remember writing a little thing with your first name and you had to write, you know, like my name is Derek, so D, you know, he is dedicated, E, he's excited, you know, I'll, I'll stop that right now, but you can kind of go through. So every letter of the Hebrew alphabet is used in each of these. In fact, I can show you right here. This is like the first eight verses right here. So Hebrew reads right to left. And so you can see every single word starts off with that particular Hebrew letter. Uh, that's Aleph is what it is. It's the first one. It'd be kind of looking at it like this in our language to where it all starts off, you know, with one particular vowel. And so that's the way each one of these are set up. And it's kind of cool. I was, I was reading about this and it said there's, there's a tradition out there that King David was teaching his son Solomon uh, how to read. And he was teaching him about the alphabet by using these things, basically A to Z. But the cool thing about this, it's not just about teaching him how to read. It's teaching him the ways of God from A to Z. So in essence, Psalm 119 is giving us the A to Z of how to appreciate and love God's word. Now, as David did this, he really is focusing on the word of God. Now, it is mentioned several different ways. In fact, there are eight different ways that the Word of God is mentioned here. So these words that are mentioned all through here, it mentions the word law, word, testimonies, ways, precepts, statutes, commandments, and rules. Now the cool thing about all of those, those are eight of them, and they are mentioned in most every verse of all of those 176 verses. At least one reference to each of those. Uh, let me show you an example. If you go down to like uh, verses 33 to 40. Now this is the Hebrew letter he, which also could be used as a vowel. But if you look for those things that I just mentioned. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes. There's that one right there. And I shall keep it until the end. Give me understanding and I shall keep thy law. There's that one there. Yea, I shall observe it with all my whole heart. Verse 35. Make me go in the path of thy commandments. There's another one. For therein I do delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not unto covetousness. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in thy way. There's that way there. Uh, verse 38, establish is a fun word, or establish. Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. Verse 39, turn away my approach which I fear for thy judgments are good. And then verse 40, Behold, I have longed after thy precepts, quicken me in thy righteousness. So again, you see those eight words there. They're mentioned all through Psalm 119. So again, David, as he put this together, wanted us to understand and appreciate the concept of the scriptures, God's word. And it, as it is mentioned right there, and you see it all through there, feel free to just scroll through there to your heart's content, looking for those words. Again, words like testimonies and word, judgments, precepts, way, uh, statutes, law, commandments. As you go through there, you're going to see those all through here. 
in an effort to help us appreciate God's word just a little bit more. Now, as we have all this, you're probably like, Derek, that's cool, you know, and it is cool. It's it's awesome. It's just, it's very, it's poetic. It's Hebrew poetry, and it's very much set up. It's not coincidental. It is done here very methodically. Perfect amount of verses to describe this. So now that we have this, what do we do with it? Well, there's four times in this particular psalm, and again, it's easy because there's so many verses here to find repetitive ideas, but there's one idea that I found in here that I think is becoming a lost art in our day. Uh, if you go to verse number uh, 15, it says, and again, remembering all the words that we looked for, it says, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. You go down to verse 48 and it says, my hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. You go down to verse 78. Let the proud be ashamed for they dealt perversely with me without a cause, but I will meditate in thy precepts. Then you scroll all the way down to 148. Here's where your thumb gets tired scrolling, right? Mine eyes prevent the night watches. The footnote says, mine eyes were awake before the night watch, that I might meditate in thy word. So, so the word is meditate. And again, meditate, I think in our day is becoming a lost art because we rarely take that time these days it, where we're always just constantly going, going, going. We're on our phones looking at things. Rarely do we we take the time to meditate and meditate literally does mean when you when you break it down it means to measure that time that you have and you take that time to relax when is the last time in this crazy world that we live in that is fraught with anxiety and being overwhelmed when is the last time we have taken to be able to meditate on the word to really take time to just focus and relax in God because I think if we did that and we really took time to do that you know we've talked about that a couple times this week when you're overwhelmed when you're stressed when you finally take time to be quiet like it was mentioned back in chapter 107 then the Lord will take us to our desired haven what person out there does not want a haven of safety during this crazy world that we live in and so that meditation is something that pondering again I think it's become a lost art in our world but as we take time to meditate we will find that thy word as it says in here this is probably the most well-known verse in chapter 119 it's verse 105 thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path Boy, you want to talk about what we need today in this world we need a lamp and we need a light because it gets pretty dark out there especially when we're overwhelmed especially when we are feeling that anxiety so I love this whole psalm and this is one that you could just study for days and days as you're looking for the ways that the word of the Lord will be of benefit to you and then what we do with it once we have that as we take time to do that I think we'll find more relaxation we'll find more light and we'll find that it provides that lamp for us in this crazy world of darkness that we have Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks, as always, for sharing these messages. Please go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel-themed socks at bombsocks.com. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Godspeed. Bye-bye.